Well, hello everyone. It's Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike and I do bees. It's the 25th of May and I'm actually already doing bees. Welcome to Southeast Louisiana. Hey there folks. I'm going to take a break real quick. Been having to stay highly hydrated. It is summer type of weather, although it's not terribly hot. We're in that humidity phase where it is just so stinking humid. Starts out in the morning at 80 degrees, but it's miserable. It's here, hurricane season's upon us, and uh, see summer's upon us, and hopefully honey harvest is upon us, and that's what I'm out doing right now, although that's not what we're gonna do. I am just moving some supers around. That's all I'm doing. Uh, the tallow, it's looking kind of funky. Uh, it's off and on, the flow is kind of off and on. One minute you get a little robin, next minute they're working some flowers. Good thing with tallow though is it does go for three weeks or so because everything blooms in different stages. But nonetheless, the tallow is looking weird this year. It, it doesn't seem like it's right. But I do have honey in the boxes and my back is telling me that right now because I've been moving boxes around and what I've been doing is under supering strong, strong colonies. But with a huge privet flow, uh, we had colonies peaking a little bit early so that makes it difficult. So the best I could do is take supers that aren't being used by colonies that have swarmed let them requeen or do whatever they're going to do, which is really tough this time of year. They don't normally requeen well. Um, but take their supers from them. Some of them are half full. Some of them are barely full. Some aren't touched. And uh, put them back on. So that's what I've been doing this morning. I'm done with that. And now I've got a couple more little tasks to do. And then I can call it a day and start on some yard work. I had a nuke that didn't sell. I was waiting on a buyer. It didn't come through. And then uh, it didn't work out with the next few people so I said look it's got to go in a 10 frame it couldn't wait any longer I put it in 10 frame last week I want to show you something when I sell nukes I like to have them full I like to have at least at least three frames of brood but preferably four and uh, packed up with bees and four frames of brood at least one emergence off of at least two frames this thing had five frames of brood was loading itself out with honey so I stuck it in this thing and I'll show you a picture of it after I put it in here just to give you an idea how the bees were. And I looked at it and said, this thing needs a super. So I put a super of foundation on, on the 18th, okay? Today's the 25th. I looked in here, look at this thing. Now, the last two frames on the edge are only drawn on one, so they've drawn these frames out. This is a nuke. Now, I think the flow is just about wrapping up, but we'll have elderberry and wildflowers and clover. Clover's not gonna burn off until we get into the uh, mid-90s and dry. Uh, it's starting get in the 90s, but we need to be really hot and dry and that, that stuff will start burning off, so it'll still be around. And there'll, there'll, be a, there'll be some stuff for them to forage on, so they might finish that box out. I checked to see if there's any brood in it, and there, there's not. She's staying in that single, and, and she's filling that super. That's a nuke. So that brings me to what we're doing today. i got to make up a couple nukes. I have some uh, queens coming. Now, these queens are going to be unmated queens, and uh, I'm going to put them in. i got three of them coming. I didn't want to get a lot. But I want to get them, so if I, if I can get them mated this late, then I can have them for next year because I want to graft off these particular queens. They're actually queens from Corey Stevens. Um, Kent Williams, the Kent Williams from Louisiana. There's two of them. Kent Williams, I know in our club, he's uh, buying a bunch. I got three coming, so we got to make some nukes. And I want them to be queenless for a few days before we put these virgins in there. And that's what we're going to do. But one of them is a special... Uh, nuke that I'm gonna make and I'm gonna show you this is gonna be a cool um, Explanation of a hive that I've got my hands on that I'm excited to show you by the way I'm not sure why I still got my veil on I guess I've just had it on all morning. It just feels right <laughs> So sorry about the camera moving. I'm, I've got a whole different tripod set up right now. I'm waiting on a new camera I mean, <laughs> I had camera catastrophe ever since mr. Ed kicked mine off the scaffold He didn't mean to <laughs> Or did he? Now, I put that apme in there and set it up, and I had plans for this, and I'm gonna explain a lot about it. That's the seven frame apme that I got to try. So far, so good, love it, and I'll tell you why. But I had other plans for it than what it's doing right now. 
So what it ended up doing was becoming a brood factory for me. I put it in his dog pen because I thought, well then maybe that'll keep the queen in and she won't swarm, but she swarmed. Dog pen didn't hold her. Of course, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Let's go look and I'll explain some of my plans I had with this thing. And, <laughs> oh gosh, it's excuse after excuse with me, but I ain't gonna lie, folks. Work hurt me really big time this year. It's not that I didn't know my limitations, but work snuck up on me. And I can't keep bees the way I want to keep bees. And some of the swarms I saw this year were my fault and it frustrated me because normally I would never have let it happen. And this is a prime example of something I wouldn't have let swarm. But I was using it as a brood factory. And I didn't eat any more brood for a little bit. And I was just leaving it. And then I had to get out of town and then work and schedule. And I got back to them going, oh goodness, I hope they didn't swarm. Maybe I can pull this out. And I can split off some more brood and it was too late, there were cells in there. So now here's what we're gonna do with it. Now folks, when it comes to these apomates, I was late to the party. This is my first one. A lot of folks have reviewed them, but they're pretty neat. I like it so far. This is a seven frame nuke. And I'm gonna show you some of the features, but it's got the different dials, colored dials because you can make it into two hives two three framers you got the bottom entrance in the tops uh, you can close these how you like them pretty neat little hive got the feeders that come with it bottom tray that comes with it the seven frame doesn't come with a pollen trap and of course i always thought about the apomaze like everybody else like well yeah but you can't get hundreds of them well at the expo what i learned was they put out a nice spreadsheet and i'll try and show it on here but by the time you buy all the components for a wooden hive, these things aren't much different nowadays with the way prices are. And they come with everything one-stop shopping on the big 10 frames. You get pollen trap trays, uh, boards, frames, everything. And now they got the new core frames. And I'll show you the old frames. I got those with this. Uh, they work for me because uh, I happen to have some wired wax. But so far, pretty neat hive. But again, I'm late to the party, so I know about as much as about this thing as some of you that have never done them and as far as you guys have you know way more than me but i like it so far and i'm going to show you some of the features and what i wanted to do with it so we're going to open it up real quick i love the latches very strong latches um very durable and they say these things do just great in the heat and the cold bees know how to regulate their temperature let's throw some smoke to this thing now there were two cells in this there's your feeder so you'll see in here that there are two frames from them and this is what those frames look like now these are the originals they got these new core frames coming out that i'm hearing about I haven't seen them this is the frame they send you now this fits with wooden frames but i had some wired wax foundation without hooks you need to start or if you have hooks you got to cut them off but i had a stockpile of this from an old 50-year beekeeper and so I said, well, shoot, I'm going to do them. So, so you split this frame in two, and you lay it in there. It fits beautifully. You snap it back, and you get good frames. So let's pull one out. And how I'm going to do this, what I need to do is I need to make one side. Um, one side needs to be my new mating nuke. And, uh, and Well, they're both going to be mating nukes because I've got a virgin on this side, I hope. Anyway, I had some cells. Uh, I don't know if they're emerged yet, but let's pull one of these frames. All right, well, there's still a lot of bees in here. All right, because this is this is the comb they built. Of course, it's filled with nectar. This is wax foundation comb. You see, they put a little drone comb in there, and now they're, of course, backfilling everything with honey. So we can set this to the side. We don't need beautiful filled up on that side. And what we're going to do is look and see. There was some cap brood in here, so I definitely want to leave some for our queen that we're getting. I'll come back in before we put her in, make sure any emergency cells, if they're even able to make them, aren't in here. I don't think they will. There shouldn't be any eggs in here. If there are, then, uh, well, I take that back. We've got a queen in here. Well, that's a surprise. Because I had cells and I left them because I didn't see any eggs. Huh, maybe they have not swarmed. All right, so that's interesting. That's a new development. Of course, nothing can go as scheduled. We have a queen, 
or at least we have eggs. These cells were in there, this was last weekend, and I've got eggs that are two and three days old. I don't see any one day old eggs that are standing straight up. And we had two cells I left in here. So I'm gonna look for a queen. Maybe they didn't swarm. And we've got to separate the queen. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to show you. As I hunt for the queen, at the very beginning, what I wanted to make it was, I wanted to make it for a breeder queen. I was getting breeder queens from the USDA bee lab, but that fell through because of the time frame they wanted to do it. And so what I was going to do was make two breeder queens and then move one into a nuke. And then I was going to be able to use this to graft from. That was my plan. And then later on, I can make it a mating nuke because this can act as a mating nuke. There's the two cells I left and they're emerged. I've been in them. Maybe that. Okay, that can't be that they're emerged and there's a laying queen in here. That, that can't be. So, these are the confusing things. There's the queen right there and that's a mated queen, folks. So, there she is. We know where she's at. <laughs> That's a mated queen. That's a mated queen. So we've got a mated queen. So here's what I'm gonna do. Okay, folks, I decided to catch her. And here's why. I wanna talk to you a little bit about this Apame and show you something about it. Now, all you folks that are after me, folks, you already know about this thing. You know it's got this handy dandy divider. So I gotta make a split. So what I was going to do with this hive is I was going to use this as, I want to put my breeder queen in here. At first I thought, well, I can put one on each side. That'd be neat, but I was like, ah, it's only three frames. Yeah, you know, I need to put a breeder queen in a good size colony. And then I thought, I'll just put one breeder in here. I'll make another one. And then what I can do is when I get ready to graft, I can take a, a frame, that was empty, drawn comb, ready for her to lay in. I could turn around, make sure she's on one side of this divider, drop this divider in, which I'm gonna do right now in a second. It drops right down in the middle. And then I could simply select the queen excluder in the dial here, which would be this right here. Okay. Put the queen on the side and use the one side as a timing frame. You know what I mean? Like, you know how you do a timing box? This is already made for you. And so that's a feature that I haven't seen people talk about that you could use this for. You could make a timing side for your queen to graft from. And then I know my, my eggs are exactly four days old. Well, that didn't work out. The Bee Lab wanted to get us those breeders way late. And you know, with my situation with queens, things didn't work out. I was kind of, I don't say I was frustrated, but I've been so busy with work, I'm frustrated with that. And I'm going to work and I don't have time to get anything else done. And so, I'm like, I don't have time to raise more queens, to experiment with what went wrong. I raised a second batch and that was it. So I turned off that deal. I'm gonna have some next year, but I'm gonna use this as a timing box then. What, what a cool idea. So when I get ready to graft, I know four days ahead of time, put me an empty frame in there or a polished one from in there, mark it so I know which one it is, put it on one side of this excluder, drop my queen in on that side, boom. Now. Is it gonna be perfect like a timing box where you put one frame and you know? No, but it'll be close enough and I think that would work. This thing also functions as a mating nuke so that you can just do the selection like this. And now you make two three frame mating nukes out of it, right? All right, say we make a, um, we graft cells in this. We pack it in, but then we wanna bank those cells or actually do a finisher. So for the finisher, I could use the excluder or the vented side, really. Uh, I'd want the excluder because I want more bees to finish, but in the end, that's versatility. So I can make it a two frame, a two, three frame mating nuke. I got the different colored entrances. Uh, I could make it into a, um, into a finishing box. And I could simply raise two nukes in the thing. And now I can do what I'm gonna do this time. And that is, since I've got the queen, I'm gonna make a split with it. How am I gonna make the split? Take one frame out. I'm gonna turn this setting to here. Now I can't, I gotta make sure it's all the way though. I wanna make sure it's closed. Don't want any openings. 
because I'm about got to make one side, and I'm going to drop this in and make it queenless on one side, and now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my queen in there. Plan was, I didn't realize I had a mated queen in here. I thought it had swarmed, and I didn't see any eggs last time, so I would say it must have just superseded her. I don't know what they did. Bottom line is, there's a lot of bees, and there's a mated queen. And so, I was, at the time, I didn't know that, so I thought, well, there's a virgin in here, because she must have emerged, or I won't know. So what I was going to do was put this in. I'm going to go ahead and drop this in. I got a hunk of honey sticking out on one frame, and I just made a split. So what I just did was made a split. These are queenless in a minute because I'm gonna let the queen go over here. They're gonna be queenless, they've got brood. They're gonna make queen cells over here. I'm gonna have to go back in and kill those queen cells. But these are gonna be nurse bees over here. So now I have made a split. And what I was going to do, knowing that, not, not realizing I had a mated queen in here, I, I, would, I wasn't gonna go trying to hunt too hard for an unmated virgin. It's so hard to find them sometimes. I was simply gonna set this to the excluder section, right? Shake all my bees on one side, pull my frames out, put this on excluder, drop it in so that the bees can still pass, but not the queen. Shake everything on one side, put the empty frames back in, put the lid on, let them repopulate, and then I'd be ready to release my virgin. That's how I was gonna do it. But now that I found a mated queen, I'm just gonna make a split with these clothes. So I've just made a split. So what I've went and done, I got my, let me show you these feeders too. Now these got bees all over them, but these feeders are pretty neat. You can flip them for candy, so they can come up and eat candy in here. Or you can flip them to where they're in the syrup mode. I think that's the mode I've got them in now. And I just pour syrup in here. These feeders are pretty nice. Self-contained, they ain't gonna leak. That's for sure. Bees aren't gonna get in them and drown. Impossible, just about. I'm not saying anything's impossible, but it's pretty close to impossible. So I put the feeder on this side to guard this side from them crossing over. What I'm going to do, take my queen off of here. I'm going to set her over here to the side. I'll put her by this feeder. I am going to shake some nurse bees over to this other side. This, this thing is packed. So I'm really going to do one shake of bees and that's it. I'm going to take this deep out of here. The two apame uh, frames. I'm going to take them out. And I am going to spin them. I'm going to pull these out. Oh man, that's heavy. So much honey in here, they don't need a lot and they're bringing stuff in. So take some of these nurse bees, shake them on that side. This is, yeah, see this is, she's laying like crazy, but I'm gonna give her another frame to lay in. Yeah, this is backfield actually, so we'll leave that one in there. And we're gonna take one out that's capped for the most part. I'm gonna dry them down a little bit. And I'm gonna give her a nice drawn comb put some eggs in all right so we're making a split in a seven frame and it's not a long split because they can't stay in here long ouch grab the bee on that frame that hurt that's crazy I, I don't them cells I don't understand what happened but bees they confuse me a lot anyway all right we've got that dropped in so we've essentially made a split. Let's put our cover back on, the, the feeder back on. All right. Okay, that's on. Get out of there, B. Let's let our queen go. Come on out, queen. Wow, that, I'm excited that I have a mated queen in here. That's very exciting. Now, I was gonna put two of my <laughs> virgins in here, but that's okay. Come on out, come on out. I know you're in there. Where's she at? I just saw her. There she went. She just hopped down in there. Good. So she's in that side. Whoa. Wow, I just knocked the camera down. She's in that side. Let's get these bees out of here. All right. So we want this over top. And now we have two separate colonies. One's queenless. And we're going to make them hopelessly queenless. We're going to put this lid on. This lid is vented as well. It just simply snaps on. Super nice, man. Super nice. I can do this a couple ways. I ran them all out with that smoke, but I can do this a couple ways. Let me smoke it so you can see it. Just a little bit smoke. And what I'm going to do is I've got the dials open and the bottom open. And I am going to shut the green side, which is my queenless side. I'll shut these, 
sliding it over look out get out of there all right so they went in whoops all right so now that's shut and i can shut this one we'll shut this to the ventilate go on in if you're going go now all right you're not going all right we'll shut that to the ventilate side field bees are all going to go to the front anyway so they're going to join in her so i gotta watch her she's gonna be packed up with bees but i gave her a spot to lay took some honey away from them uh, took some nurse bees away from them. Not going to be a lot. Alright, quick voice over here. As you can see and as I'm realizing, there are going to be a lot of bees on three frames with this existing queen. And that's going to be, you know, a swarm waiting to happen eventually. So, here's the plan as I go forward as I'm thinking about this. I'm just going to simply let her fill up that frame I gave her. They'll begin to cap those over. Right before emergence or as they're emerging, I should by then see eggs out of my newly mated queen on the left and that'll be great i want to leave this existing queen in there should there be a failure um that way i can merge them back but should there not be a failure and she be get, she gets mated on the left i'm simply going to take this existing queen because she's a good one i want to save her and take her her frames and her nurse bees and her brood and move them to a nuke then i'll put some new frames back in and uh, we'll let all the field bees come back and at that point I can simply, since I now have a new lane queen on the left, simply go to the ventilate mode in the divider board, let them begin to smell each other, then switch over to my excluder mode. Then I that allows them to merge, and then a couple days later, just pull the divider all together. Um, should she not get mated while I'm still waiting with the existing queen in there, then I can just simply merge them again the same way. It all works out either way. So such versatility with this thing, really excited about what I'm seeing out of it and the things I can do with it. So that's gonna be the plan going forward as I see it at this point. We'll turn right around and open this one up. There it is. There, that's open now. Make sure this one's shut. That's to the ventilate side. Now, I'll lose all the field bees. We'll be getting a queenless colony. That queenless colony will make emergency cells Monday afternoon. I will go through and kill all the emergency cells, make them hopelessly queenless. They really needed to be hopelessly queenless longer, but I just haven't had time. And Tuesday, probably Wednesday, yeah, so they'll be queenless. Yeah, so Wednesday morning, I'll be able to drop them in. And there you go. So all the different things you can do with one, and in my case today, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a split with it. That's simple. Uh, don't have to move any boxes or nothing. Just put a frame in and pull one. And that's all she wrote. I like it. I really like this this seven frame. It's so versatile for things to do with it. Ah, uh, oh, the different things you can do. I like it a lot. So you might be like me when I first saw people going through these. I guess you got to get your hands on one. So see what it does. See what it's made of, and really uh, put your hands on it. And when you see the quality of it, because I used to be like, okay, I see these guys are doing it, and I used to say, great product, love it, would love to have one for the four or five in my backyard for my bees but as far as a big operation i don't know well would i say it's great for a big operation i don't know is it expensive i'm not gonna sit here and tell you it's not pricey i'm not gonna tell you that at all because you can see for yourself i'm not gonna uh, try and say something that, that you can see for yourself but again they put out a spreadsheet that showed all the um all the features that it offers in one buy with the 10 frame now if you go buy all those same components for the 10 frame wooden now if you you may not buy all those components you know but if you buy everything pollen trap queen excluder frames foundation lids bottoms screens trays you actually come out almost more if not more i think if you look at the spreadsheet and i'll show that on here but Uh, so, in the end, for a lifetime colony, or a hive rather, I don't know. I'll buy three or four a year, every year, and as my rotten wooden ones go out, I put these in. I can still use wooden frames. I can still use wooden supers if I want. You know? There's a lot of versatility to it. Um, so I'm, I'm not telling you I'm going all Apple made. What I'm telling you, this is a fine, fine product that uh, 
I was so happy to get my hands on and try it out and I like it a lot uh, I, I can see myself having some of these as we go on and I could definitely see myself having a few of these seven frame uh, if I get into some serious queen rearing I could see having ten of these laid down the line um, using them as mating nukes using them as timing frames it could be a brood factory, but any nuke can be a brood factory. I understand that. But I like this because it can be a brood factory where I separate the brood off of it and I know where it is and where I put it in. And I can drop empty frames on one side of the divider and pull. And I used it as a brood factory and it's a pretty good thing. Um, a timing frame, I told you that. It can be used as a mating nuke. It makes an easy, super easy split. And then in the end, it makes a seven frame hive. Many, many uses. I like it a lot. I'm giving it a thumbs up in my opinion. And I hope I can give my queen a thumbs up this late when she gets in here and we get her mated. And folks, again, I'm not a guy that's affiliated. I don't have, you, you know, I don't, would I be affiliated with this? Absolutely. I'd support this 100% and all the products that I, that I put on here. I, I, this is one where I actually did kind of a exclusive video, but most of the time I just add in the products into my videos because I want to show you something I like or something I'm using or something I'm trying or something I've been offered to try. I don't jump at any offer. I've had major suppliers come to me, a one major supplier, and I just wouldn't do anything with them. I don't I don't want their products. I, I use some of their products, um, but I, I'm not just going to jump on anything because it's free. I do regret the refractometer. Man, I should have got that digital refractometer a couple years ago. That would have been nice, but I turned them down. But I don't just jump on anything. And uh, if I'm, and maybe that's why my reviews are most of the time good on the stuff I, I get because I have to think about it and go, will I really use that? Okay, I'll probably use it, then I'll look at it. A particular person that's a pretty much a celebrity, TV celebrity that's from down here, I, I go camping with him and I used to watch him do all his lives. He'd do his lives while we were camping and he'd do different uh, products. And he always told me, he said, I'm not doing a, I'm not doing a product for just anybody. And this guy, this is, this is a guy that's on the History Channel kind of guy. Uh, he don't, he, he told me, he says, it's got to be good. And if, I, and if I try it and it doesn't work, I'm not going to put it out there. So that's kind of how I am. I'm not one that's going to try it if I don't know I'm going to use it. And I'm not going to show it if I find it to be substandard. So please don't take this as me trying to sell anything. I'm just showing you something that I have the opportunity to try and show you all the different things. I've seen people promote it. I finally got a chance to try it. I just wanted to show it to y'all from my point of view and what I saw about it. I like it. All right, guys. Well, look, that's it on the Apple Man. I appreciate all y'all watching. Appreciate your support. Hope you enjoyed this little video. It's Barry's Best Hunting. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Y'all have a wonderful week, and may God bless you. We'll see y'all later.